Your husband has just arrived. I know. I saw from the tower. And was sorry or pleased? Sorry, of course. I'm rather pleased. It's an added excitement to have the husband in the house. No, be sensible. He'll be gone in a few days. It would be even more exciting to make love to you in front of his eyes. No. Shall we do it? You will not make love to me while I'm still married. Neither in front of his eyes nor behind his back. The macro wouldn't dare stop me. I dare. The heir to the throne. Are you? Am I? Perhaps. Did you see who arrived just now with Macro? No. A boy. Tiberius Gemellus, the Emperor's one and only grandson. Does that mean the old man's going to choose? I love you, I want you, and I must have you. Greetings, Macro. Caligula. Any of my dear. What excitements in Rome? Here it's been very dull. Nothing has happened, has it, Enya? In Rome, the senators continue to accuse each other of treason. Also dull. There are so many more interesting crimes. Senators have no originality. Speaking of dullness, I see you brought my young cousin. The emperor asks you to join them. It will be a touching reunion. How is it going? He loves me. He wants me. He must have me. Has he had you yet? No. Maybe we should move on to that stage. I think so. Or he'll find someone else. Yes. He doesn't enjoy frustration. Caesar. Come in, Caligula. You know your cousin. Indeed. Welcome to Capri. Thank you. I've invited Gemellus to stay. Uh, forever, may I hope? For a time. I imagine you've heard a great deal in Rome about our island. Yes, of course. Uh, the nameless vices we practice. Nameless? Uh, that's the wrong word. They all, in fact, have names, but not used in polite conversation. Mm? I suppose... Go and find your room, Gemellus. We shall see you at dinner. Yes, Grandfather. Jamalus, Caligula, you two are to be friends. Yes, Grandfather. You already are friends. Tiberius? Mm. May I call you Grandfather too? Well, I am the son of your adopted son, Germanicus. It would be quite proper. And it would please me so much. It would amuse you so much. That too. You're, you're always right. And you are a flatterer. Yes. Grandfather? Son of Germanicus. And of my oldest enemy, Agrippina. Oh, yes. Do you hear from Mother these days? She writes to me by every messenger protesting against her imprisonment and demanding to be released. And so should I, if I were her. The latest letter, she threatens to starve herself to death. <laughs> that would suit you. No. You don't want her alive. I don't want her dead. I have too many deaths in your family marked against my name. I'm sending Macro to see her, to try to persuade her at least to outlive me. Would you like to go with Macro? No, thank you. She is your mother. I never cared much for blood relationships. Do you care for anyone, Caligula? Yes, Grandfather. You. The lie is so blatant it is forgivable. <laughs> My lady, I bring greetings from the Emperor. Take me to him. Alas, that is not possible. Take me to Rome, then. I'm sorry. Must I stay here? Does Tiberius say I must stay here? 
The Emperor's message is simply that he begs you to take some form of nourishment. He is deeply concerned for your health and well-being. I am told that you've not eaten for five days now. You do not understand. This gesture can achieve nothing except to distress your friends. My lady, the Emperor implores you to eat. The Emperor's will is not as strong as mine. I leave you to it. Right, carry on. There was really nothing we could do. What little went into her throat, she immediately regurgitated. Poor Agrippina. Yes. That poor. I mean, I see the, you know, the, the point. Dying instead of going up, just surviving. It's brave. Would you have done it, Uncle Claudius? No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that sort of person. I just try to survive. <laughs> My dear Nerva, the soup was not poisonous. At least no more than usual. <laughs> <laughs> Will you excuse me, Caesar? Will you all excuse me? myself. Oh, uh, do please continue. I was wrong to talk of it at the dinner table. You were wrong yet again. Agrippina finally defeated me by dying. You have reversed the natural order of things. You bestow death upon some as a kindness and inflict life upon others as a punishment. Perhaps because I myself think of death as a long-awaited holiday. May I ask why you decline to eat? I have decided to follow Agrippina's example. No. Not because I loved or admired her. I thought she was a tiresome woman. Well, then why? You are my oldest friend. Because I cannot bear any longer to be your oldest friend. I imagine it is nothing small you hold against me. My occasional private debaucheries, uh, God knows I'm past those now. My unfortunate manner, my inability to offer or receive affection. Since it is something larger, may I speak in my own defense? I'm not condemning you, Tiberius. I'm saying I've had enough of you at last. That is a dreadful condemnation. If you feel it to be so, my defense? There is no argument. I have done my best to be an honest and efficient administrator. You've been entirely honest and enormously efficient. I've given the Roman Empire 20 years of peace. Yes, the achievement is great. 
I've rebuilt the economy of Rome and the Empire, which are now more prosperous than ever before. You have done wonders in that direction. I have preserved the ancient laws and forms of government handed on to me by Augustus. You have preserved the forms. Mm -hmm. The fault lies there. The fault lies in yourself. My reign has been a failure. Yes. Men have two contradictory desires. One is for freedom. One is for order and security. I've given them the second, but taken away the first. Yes. Following in the path laid down by Augustus. How many conspirators against yourself have been killed in the last three years, Tiberius? Including Agrippina, I count such suicides as killings. Thirty-four. Augustus, in his heyday, killed far more than that. Without remembering the number. But he could do it and still seem virtuous and still beloved. Whereas with you, the effect of your reign has been to make the emperor a monstrous tyrant and the throne a symbol of oppression. I have lacked the power to charm. Is that the fault? That was the start of it. And the finish? You have developed from a seeming tyrant, seemingly heartless, into a real one. Since we have been friends, I must tell you my belief. And therefore you propose to die? You, with all your experience, have been ruined by absolute power. I prefer not to see what will happen after your death. Ruined? I've been ruined by one thing, by the question of the succession. What am I to do? Bring Germanicus back to life? Bring Drusus back to life? Bring Nero Caesar back to life? I did not kill them. They died because of you. No. Germanicus, because he foolishly believed that he'd been poisoned in magic by your man, Piso. Drusus and Nero Caesar, because your man, Sejanus, foolishly believed he could hope for the throne. If you had been a different person, you would have chosen differently, and things would have happened otherwise. I acted in accordance with what I considered to be best for Rome. History judges not by intentions, but by results. Good night, Caesar. I shall retire to my room for my few remaining days. I should prefer not to receive visitors. If any come, I shall not speak to them. Never. Are you sorry for me? Grandfather? I hate this island. We'll move somewhere else. It is kind of you to sit with me. Oh, I thought I'd just stay with you till Macro comes back. Will Macro come back? He's a sensible man. He abandons the setting sun, hastens towards the rising. Click your... You're hurting me. Yes. That is not the way to show love. It's one of the ways. No. One of the thousand ways. I'll show you another. Macro! What are you doing? You. Go tell Macro I want him here. Caligula wants him here now. I should be dead very soon. Sorry. Hmm? I've had, um, 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 disappointing life. Yes. It has.
have been a succession of disappointments. <laughs> feeling of kinship. So is mine too. <laughs> Shall I end your run? By making you my successor? No. Why not? You're my nephew. Brother of my first appointed heir, Germanicus. You could be emperor. I'm not uh, suitable. Hmm. There is a better reason. You need a better one? If I made you the next emperor, your death would follow within a week of mine. A week. <laughs> a day. No, Kalikula, no! Kalikula, promise. Think of the promise. No! Macro? I should break the news to you that I harbour a secret passion for your wife. Of course, this is news to her too, and of course I've never dared even to speak of my love. Should I by any wild chance succeed to the throne, I shall humbly ask you to divorce Enya, and I shall marry her myself. You, I need hardly say, will become my chief minister, the second only to myself. Is it agreed? You look virtuous. I hope I am. Kiss me. Caligula will kill you. Others will kill him. What? When I'm dead, let fire destroy the earth. Good evening, dear grandfather. I hope you are much recovered. Caligula. Telling Jamalus, I have made you and he my joint heirs. Joint heirs? We are favored beyond our deserts. To my estate. Grandfather, you must not die. Caligula. Caligula. Fetch Claudius. Fetch the others. Fetch the doctors. Fetch the captain of the guard. What's that? I've always wanted his signet ring. He named you. With his dying breath. Who else could he possibly have named? No one is to enter without the Emperor's permission.
The Emperor is dead. With his dying breath, he named his successor. Caligula. Thank you, gentlemen, for your loyal addresses. You two, of course, as consuls, are the rulers of Rome. I myself have no position and no powers, and shall assume none, except such as the Senate will be pleased to bestow on me. We can safely say that the Senate will ask you to accept the title and powers of Emperor. We shall arrange for the Senate to meet in special session this afternoon. Thank you, Negrinus. It would be a great help. May we consult our colleagues, the delegates from the Senate? Of course. I was hoping you'd bring them forward. Selenus, I'm delighted to see you again. Caesar. Do come and join us. And cousin Lepidus. Caesar. Cousin and brother-in-law indeed. How is Drusilla? Very well. And particularly, how are those marvellous legs of hers, no? Ah, <laughs> <laughs> Gentlemen, and Agrinus has proposed that the Senate should meet this afternoon. It can be done. Perhaps we could also use the occasion to dispose of Tiberius's will. Uh, dispose of? Read it to the Senate. Oh, yes, of course. I should tell you the will does not make me Tiberius's heir. What? Not his sole heir, that is. I am joint heir with his grandson, Gemellus. But I'm anxious to do whatever is proper. The will must be read to the Senate. The legacies will be paid, more than paid. I shall increase the amounts. Uh, but if the Senate could, and it will, could quite properly be put aside. I agree. Thank you, gentlemen. I am in your hands, whatever you and the Senate decide. <laughs> Didn't I do that well? Hmm? You'll make a good emperor. I shall go down in history as Gaius the Good. I'm afraid you're stuck with your nickname. All right then, Caligula the, um, what begins with C? Caligula the Captivating. <laughs> Are you really going to pay those legacies? I'm already the darling of the empire simply because they hated Tiberius. Now I must make them love me for myself because I am generous and merciful and everything that Tiberius wasn't. I'll pay the legacies. A double them, a fistful of gold for every Roman. What else do they want? Circuses? Then they shall have circuses such as they'd never dreamed of. What else? That'll do for a start. My first public act before the ceremonies, before the circuses, will be to sail to Pandateria and collect the bones of my honoured mother Agrippina and ceremonially deposit them in Augustus's tomb. Oh, and my brother's bones too, we mustn't forget him. <laughs> If that doesn't get them loving you, what will? Granddaughter of the god Augustus, wife of the great hero Germanicus, noblest of mothers that this empire has known, and you, my brother Nero Caesar, who should now be emperor in my place, both of you foully sent to your death by the arch-tyrant Tiberius. We weep for you, but we rejoice that this family, the true imperial family, is once more in possession of the throne. For you, mother, I appoint a special day of remembrance to be marked by circus games at which your statue shall be paraded before the people of Rome. To my three sisters, I assign all the rights and privileges of Vestal Virgins, and their names shall be included in all official prayers for my welfare and in all oaths of allegiance sworn to my rule. How long will it all last? The cheering. Yes. You're growing up. I hope so. It will last as long as the... Uh, 
And Caligula enjoys being loved. There are other forms of enjoyment, you know. The Emperor. Dear uncle, dear cousin, great news for you both. No one has told you. Well, how could they? I only decided this moment. Well, you'll be overjoyed. It's what both of you want. I await your thanks. Hmm. May we know what we are thanking you for? I shall come to you, Claudius. Jimenez, as you know, I've had some difficulty over your grandfather's will, the Senate having set it aside. I understand their reasons. Of course, don't we all? But despite the fact that the will is invalid, I have paid the legacies uh, to his friends, to the army, to the people of Rome, all except one. I hope you understand the reasons for that too. Yes, Caesar. The legacy to you of half the residue of Tiberius' estate. I understand. Well, I'd gladly pay it, but you do see my problem. Well, the Senate set the will aside for precisely this reason, that Tiberius had made you his joint heir. Now, how can I go against a ruling of the Senate? Hmm? Caesar, I do not expect to receive the legacies. But I have found a way of making it up to you more than making it up. Well, thank you, Caesar. I am awarding you the official title of National Youth Leader. In December, the celebrations of Saturnalia will be extended from four days to five. The additional day will be known as National Youth Day. I'm greatly honored, Caesar. I haven't finished yet. To deal with the problem of the legacy. Now, I am making you richer, far richer than you would have been under the will. I am adopting you as my son and heir. After my death, you will receive not half, but all. Caesar, may I ask you to take the oath of allegiance? I swear, kneeling. I swear that I value my life less highly than I do the safety and the well-being of the emperor. And his sisters? Dear sisters, dear Jamelis. Claudius, uh, since when all said and done you are a member of my family, Bancro, what do we decide for Claudius? Oh, the... whisper, whisper. I must be the one to announce it. Oh, yes. Now, Jamelus has his wish. What do you want most in the world? Now, you must ask or you will not receive. I think I should like to retire to my house in the country. Claudius, that is not what you want. I know better than you do. Whatever you say, Caesar. Uh, Claudius, you're not even a senator. No, that is... I am not allowed to vote or to speak. But I cannot have a member of my family treated so shamefully. I've got used to it. I bestow on you a prize beyond your wildest dreams. The Senate. The consuls have asked permission to resign in my favor. I shall assume office in July. You will be my colleague. Uh, uh, Consul. You will have an equal voice with myself in the ruling of Rome. Take the oath of allegiance. I swear that I value my life less highly than I do know. Good. 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 Do the safety and well-being of the emperor and... And his sisters? And his sisters. 
You have a fever. No. Brain fever. No. Brain fever. No, I have a revelation. My quiet. A revelation. I am a god. Caligula. A god. Caligula, all we want you to do is get better. I'm immortal. No. Closer. Come closer. So are you. God. Goddess. Caligula. Caligula. So long as the Emperor is ill, then officially you're in charge. Yes. Except that you'd be foolish to do anything. I, d I d don't intend to do anything. I only mention it because, or so people tell me, you have once or twice in your life been foolish. I make up for it by being a... a Coward. Good. It's why I survive. Then you understand that you might not continue to survive if Caligula recovers and finds that you've done something he does not approve of. I do understand that without you telling me. So, the only other thing is... What if Caligula does not recover? He has adopted Jamelus as his heir. He has also, in a sense, adopted me. Oh, yes. He made a promise in writing to marry Enya, once he has authorized our divorce, and to make me the second man in the empire. Yes, I, I had heard something of that. You are consul. I am second man. We should come to an arrangement. If um, Caligula dies, the Senate must decide. For some years now, the Senators have preferred to do what they're told. Tiberius got them in the habit. I don't... don't want to be Emperor. <coughs> <laughs> My dear Claudius, no one would dream of suggesting that. Oh. <laughs> We are law-abiding men. The Emperor's heir must succeed with a sensible regent. Uncle Claudius, Macro, greetings from heaven. Caesar, your doctors are insistent you should remain in bed. I don't need doctors, Drusilla will tell you. I'm a god. My brief retirement from public affairs was disguised as an illness. In fact, I sought an opportunity to meditate on what is wrong with our state and our society, and I have come to certain conclusions which, Macro... Caesar? ...shall be embodied in a series of messages to the Senate. Yes, Caesar. My sole intention is to restore the ancient Roman virtues. Claudius! Caesar! You agree we should restore the ancient Roman virtues? Yes, Caesar. First, all sexual perverts will be driven from the city. Claudius, do you agree? Yes, Caesar. Second, the crime of adultery, which has sometimes been overlooked, will be invariably punished by banishment. Claudius? Caesar. Third, any instance of public morality will be handsomely rewarded from public funds. Yes, Caesar. A fourth. Anyone who is known to have rejoiced at what was thought to be my illness will be immediately put to death. Caesar, the whole of Rome offered prayers and sacrifices during what was thought to be your illness in the hope of your recovery. Then the whole of Rome shall be rewarded. There were even some who offered to give their lives if you should recover. Then see that they kill themselves. Caesar? The sanctity of oaths must be respected. Yes, Caesar. Jamelus, Caesar. Did you swear anything? I, I, I prayed for your recovery. Only pray? I, and, and I offered sacrifices. Thank you, Jamelus. Come. 
Let me embrace you. You may go to your room. His breath smells. Why does his breath smell? He's been troubled by a cough. It is the smell of the medicine. The Salonis, you're too kind. I think it's the smell of an antidote. It is the medicine. Because he believes that I may poison him, that is treason. Caesar, you have abolished treason as a crime. But not rejoicing. No, he did not rejoice. When the Emperor is thought to be sick, the heir rejoices. Isn't that so, Macro? Yes, Caesar. No doubt he made plans in the hope of my death. He may well have done. The case is proved. Tiberius Jumellus Caesar. What do you shave with? With my razor. You have a razor? Yes. As the senior member of the Senate, you are granted the privilege of cutting your own throat. So perish all who do not worship me. You must worship me. I am a god! Love me. Drusilla is, is dead, my, my sister, my, my wife is, is dead. How? <laughs> you must pay her all honours. Put guards at her doors. No one must see her body. She is too sacred. No one must see her. You're immortal. I'll make sure you're immortal. I'll have you deified. By decree. What else would you like? A golden statue in the Senate House? And one in the Temple of Venus, the same size as the goddess herself, and honoured by the same rites. And a shrine of your own with twenty priests. Hmm. What else would you like? Huh? <laughs> 
You are in good humor, may we ask why? He is inviting us to love so that he can threaten us with death. Yes, that's what I imagine. He is above the law. We are not. So we shall go no further than a polite smile. Even that may be too much. Anya? Yes? Yes, what? Yes, darling. Yes, my love. Yes, my love. And this pretty little throat will be cut whenever I please. Yes, Caesar. Well, I'm simply pointing out that I can have people put to death whether they commit a capital offence or not. But you like to have an excuse. No. The reason for my laughing, Livius Geminius came to me today. He swore on oath, invoking destruction on himself and his whole family if he spoke falsely, that he saw Drusilla ascending to heaven and being welcomed there by Jupiter and Juno. Yes, that is amusing. It gave me a new insight into the business of being emperor. A new invention. Oh, yes? Lepidus. <laughs> I have invented uncertainty. May we ask for an explanation? Or are we to be uncertain? Drusilla, the emperor's sister, is dead. Therefore, it must be an offence to rejoice. But she's a goddess. She's gone to join the other gods in heaven, therefore it must be an offence to mourn. So you can get anyone, either way, any time. The secret of being a successful emperor is to have everything depend on one's whim, so that no one knows what will happen until the emperor says this, or that... Or neither. So that everyone must seek to please me without knowing what will please. I drink to a most successful ruler. Ladies? Enya doesn't know. Do you, my love? No, my love. And you don't know what'll happen, do you, darling? No, darling. I promise to make you my wife. Yes. Uh, but you're still married to Macro, in name at least. Yes. Well? I know that I love you. Everyone loves me. I think you may marry me. If I give up thinking, you'll marry me. That is not at all a bad answer. Dear Sister Julia... Oh, Caligula, you're impossible. Dear Sister Julia, that is the precise reason for being an emperor. All impossibilities are possible. Dear Sister Julia, you have committed adultery. And more. With Lepidus. And others. It is a serious crime. Dear Sister Agrippinella. The same answers as dear Sister Julia, if you need answers. It is a serious crime. Lepidus. Caligula, darling heart, are you losing your sense of humor? Or letting it run away with you? I'm simply practicing the art of creating uncertainty. Congratulations, you're doing it almost too well. I shall do it better and better. But may we be clear on one thing? Hmm? Are we supposed to laugh? Yes. Let's all laugh. More wine. Lepidus, tell us a funny story. Hmm? None springs to mind. Uh, then I'll tell you one Tiberius told me. Uh, when Augustus offered him the succession, a Tiberius tried to refuse, because under the absolute rule of one man, human life and human happiness are at the whim of the ruler. They hang by a rotten thread. Oh, 
Well, don't you think that's funny? The point of the joke is that that is why Tiberius wanted to refuse. Now laugh! 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 <laughs> I shall leave you now, and you won't know whether I'm listening outside or coming back suddenly, or never. A macro. You remember Tiberius? Yes. Who is the likeliest man to wish an emperor dead? Strongest candidate for the succession. And who is the strongest candidate for succeeding to me? You are slow today, Macro. Your cousin and brother-in-law, Lepidus? Of course. And he is conspiring? He has written letters plotting my death to my sisters. They're in it too. You have these letters? We have letters in what appears to be their handwriting. But Callistus is my great new discovery. He has many talents. He's a brilliant penman. He has written the letters that they must have written. My lady, I have orders to place you under arrest. Emilius Lepidus, I have orders to place you under arrest. On what charge? Conspiracy to kill the Emperor. <laughs> He's mad. He has evidence. The Emperor. Gentlemen. Hail, Hail Caesar. Caesar. And why are you here? Caesar. We are a delegation sent by the Senate to felicitate you on your escape from death. To report that we have confirmed the sentence of on death on Lepidus and that of exile on his female fellow conspirators. And what else? And uh, to announce that the Senate has voted you an ovation. Just as if you had... Uh, uh, as if... Uh, 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 defeated your enemies on the field of um, battle. I have single-handed an ovation. The Senate should have voted me a triumph and you send this fool! My uncle as if I were a child! Uh, me! The man who saved the Empire! Uh, Inform the Senate that my uncle is to be stripped of all privileges. <laughs> and if he speaks or votes in debate, which I advise him not to do, <coughs> he will speak and vote last. <coughs> I can't. I did tell you not to choose me. Will you love me always? Always. We've come a long way since Capri and Tiberius. In one year. Looking back, what did you think of Tiberius? What most people thought. Tyrant. A monster. A better dead? Better dead. And you killed him? I hastened his end. Even though you were in his service? I was already in yours. You were in Tiberius's pay? Until his death. In his pay at the moment of killing him? 
Yes. And until that last moment you made every pretense of obeying his orders. Are you reproaching me with helping you onto the throne? What a man has done once, he can do again. Caesar, I am your loyal and devoted servant. As you once were Tiberius's. Tiberius talked to me last night. What? Did you know what he said to me? He said, trust no one. Everyone hates you, everyone wishes you dead. Everyone will kill you if he possibly can. That is what it means to be an emperor. Do not believe their pretenses, he said. Their love, their friendship is a fraud. Look to only two things. Your own safety and your own pleasure. Remember, no one serves you of his own free will, but only because you have the power to give him death. Caesar! Enya, Macro, you will oblige me by killing yourselves. 